Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I have a Sony A9 in the brand new Tamron 28-75mm 2.8 lens, which is the perfect lens for an editorial spread. You're going to want to check this out. So here we are at Keith Bradshaw's house, and this guy is a musician, he's a producer, he's a photographer, he's a videographer, he's kind of a renaissance man, and he has one of the most unbelievable record collections I've ever seen. So today we're going to be doing an editorial shoot that really showcases Keith and some of these roles that he's played over his career. Now normally I shoot with Nikon cameras, but today we've been testing out the Sony A9 for another review. And it's been an interesting process going from a DSLR to a mirrorless camera. Now when shooting editorial work, I typically like to have one single lens that goes from wide angle to telephoto. So for this shoot, we've gone with the Tamron 28-75 to lens because it kind of does a little bit of everything and because it's a 2.8 aperture, it's going to allow me to both get sharp images at f8, but also get that nice blurry background at 2.8. So my goal today is to take three simple pictures. We're gonna be shooting in different locations around his property, and hopefully together we can come up with a three image editorial shoot that's really going to look good side by side. So the first shot that I wanna do is right over here in Keith's living room where he's got this incredible record collection. So let's go ahead and head over there and set up the first shot. So I just realized, I think we have Peter Hurley's pro photo remote. Whoops. So for this first shot, I think I wanna capture a portrait of Keith here with his record collection. He has a reel-to-reel -reel deck here and all this awesome vintage equipment. And he has one of the most impressive vinyl collections I've ever seen. There's probably like, how many do you think there are here, Keith? Like a thousand records? Something like that. This is crazy. So I definitely want to get him kind of in this environment. And then I think because of these windows to my left and behind me, it's going to create some really interesting ambient light that we can use strobe light to really pull everything together. So as you can see here, we have a Profoto B10 set up on a boom arm, and I've just used a simple umbrella. I'm actually going to fire the strobe into this white umbrella, which is going to create a really soft light that's going to be pretty flattering on Keith's face. And I have this positioned off here to my left, and that's going to emulate the light that's coming out of this window, and I think it's going to look really natural. I wouldn't necessarily want to put the light on the other side of the frame, because one, there's no window over there, and two, I just think you're gonna destroy all the shadows, and I personally like a few shadows in my photographs. So for this composition, I've decided to go with a vertical shot, and I'm actually shooting right at 50 millimeters, so this is a really common focal length, and because this lens is a zoom lens, I'm able to pick the perfect millimeter. Now, truth be told, 50 millimeters is a little wider than what I want, but I know in post I can simply crop the image a little tighter and it gives me a little bit of flexibility depending on where this final image might be published. Keith, if you just sit up here, I'm gonna take a test shot. And as you can see from this photo, I actually have the light in my frame. And the reason for that is I, one, don't want light spilling all over the scene, but two, you can get some really dramatic light the closer that you get it to your subject. Now, when I get done with this session, I'm actually gonna pull the light out and take a second frame without the light in there. And then in Photoshop, I'm just gonna brush in that ambient exposure so that I can get rid of the light but still have the light exactly where I want it on my subject. Now, the reason I can do this is because I have my camera on a tripod. If I was hand holding this, there's no way I would ever get two frames to line up exactly. Now, as you can see in this photograph, the right shoulder of Keith is a little dark, so I think I have a solution that's really simple for that. All right, so since we have some light coming in from the left side of the frame, which replicates kind of the light coming out of this window, I'm noticing that I'm not getting a lot of light on Keith's back, which if I put a light back here, I can kind of embellish the light that's coming out of these windows behind him. So I think this is going to make this image look a lot more polished, but I'm not adding strobe light in any location that it wouldn't normally be coming from. And with this Profoto B1, I'm just gonna leave this bare bulb and it's just gonna edge out the right side of his body. So now we got the light looking really good. Keith, let's get this record. What do you have there, a police album? All right, this is Police's first record. Let's uh, just have you holding that, and then I'm just gonna work with Keith to get him in a position that looks natural without it being too posed, but I really wanna showcase both the record, I wanna showcase all of the, uh, the equipment in the background, and we've also put all these records here by his feet, which I just think really ties it all together. A lot of this image actually has been styled quite a bit. So we've moved plants around, we've placed everything here perfectly so that we get that image that really tells a story, I hope.
In Photoshop, I simply cropped in, I removed the light, I put a more interesting background in the window, and then I added an alien skin to give the image an overall look. So I think for every editorial spread, you need a good headshot. So let's put Keith up against this white wall and let's take a simple headshot. That didn't sound good. So one of the easiest ways to take a professional looking headshot is just to use a simple beauty dish. So I have a beauty dish here mounted on our B10 and then I like to boom the beauty dish over so that I don't have the light stand in front of my subject. It helps me get the light directly overhead without getting in the way when I'm taking photos. Now, I was recently shooting at 50 millimeters for the previous shot. I'm simply gonna zoom in to 75 millimeters. That's going to be a lot more flattering to my subject. And I'm gonna change my aperture to 2.8, which is going to give me that shallow depth of field look. When using C-stands, always have your sandbags. So now that I have the light set up, I'm just gonna make sure I have this in the perfect position, which is going to actually be pretty close to Keith. And Keith wears glasses too, so you're gonna to wanna to be mindful that you don't get any glare. I think these are pretty glare-free glasses, aren't they? Now one thing to keep in mind is you really wanna watch the shadows. Now we have Keith really close to the wall, so the shadows are gonna show up if the light's not placed properly. So with the light up high, I have it in a position where the shadows on his face aren't gonna to be too dramatic, but the shadow from his body is gonna be cast down and behind him so that it's not on our white background. All right, so we got the beauty dish in place. I have this directly over Keith's face and let's take some shots. Go this way and look down. This is where it'd be nice to have the vertical grip because I can just click here instead of this weird mm -hmm. arm. So now that we got a shot of Keith with the records, we got the headshot, let's go outside and let's get something completely different. So for this third and final shot, I think it'd be really cool to incorporate the guitar in some way. Keith is an unbelievable guitar player, and he has this really interesting shed. This is kind of like his garage. And when I was scouting the location, I just found all of this clutter in here to be extremely interesting. So I think for this shot, I'm gonna to try to shoot closer to the 28 millimeter range that's going to allow me to really showcase the environment. And then I'm gonna have Keith stand in with a Stratocaster and his amp. And I think the cluttered environment is going to make for a really cool portrait. So for this final lighting setup, I'm gonna do pretty much what I did earlier with the headshot and just use a simple beauty dish. I have this connected to the new Profoto B10. I really like that light because it's so compact and lightweight. And as you can see, I have this mounted on a C stand, which it does help to have this as lightweight as possible. So the plan is just to have Keith kind of standing in here with his guitar. We're gonna light him with the beauty dish. And then what I might do is I might take this Profoto B1 and I might do a few flash pops to kind of accentuate some of the craziness that's in this garage. I'm not sure if I really want this to be really dark or if I'm gonna want some highlights being cast through the scene, but because I'm gonna be shooting on a tripod, I'm gonna be able to composite that later in post. All right, so we got all the lighting looking good. We got Keith here jamming on the guitar. I have my camera on a tripod. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a bunch of pictures now, kind of direct Keith. Let's knock out a bunch of photos. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep the focus on him. I'm gonna turn the camera into manual focus so that nothing changes. Keith, I'm gonna have you step out. And then I'm just gonna walk around the background with this B1 and a 10 degree grid. And I'm just gonna light up little areas of the background that I could blend into the final photograph. This is a really cool trick if you only have one or two lights and you wanna do some really selective light painting. It, it just gives you a lot of options in post-production. I wound up blending two images together and then put a filter on for the final look. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think these images turned out really well. And the big thing to keep in mind is when you shoot editorial, you really need to get a lot of variety. You're trying to tell a complete story. And I think with just three images, this really told a good story about who Keith is and all of the things that he's involved in. If you want to learn from a photographer who's really good in this genre, check out Clay Cook's work. We did a tutorial with him. And we got a bunch of other tutorials that you can check out at fstoppers.com slash store. Sweet home. No? Well here, you play something. You play something, Mr. Professional. <laughs> <laughs>